Um, but we're glad to have you here. Leadership 103. This is Living Your Strengths. My name is Pastor Jeremy, and it's good to have you with us. And from wherever you're watching in the world, it's good to have you with us as well. Um, we're going to jump right into it tonight. Tonight is going to be mostly interactive and engagement. There's not going to be a ton of instruction. I'm going to share a little bit of the history of Clif uh, Clifton Strengths Finders and how Dr. Clifton, Don Clifton, came up with his system and how he came up with this test. And we're gonna clarify a few things tonight for those of us who may not fully understand the test or have uh, seen it before before the last three weeks. But before I do that, I wanna welcome everybody on behalf of Pastors Joel and Victoria Osteen. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, the, Le the Lakewood Leadership Program. And um, it's a joy to be with all of you every single week to talk about leadership. Um, it's a passion of our heart. And um, we wanna be the kind of people that God has created us to be, amen? We want to be the people that God has created us to be in a way that we're exercising our God-given identity to honor and glorify him, all right? Your story is for his glory. Your life is for his glory. And so as we exercise these gifts that he's given to us, he's given us a gift. Our gift to him is to use them. And so we're going to do that. Tonight, before we get started, let's pray. And I want to introduce a few people. Father, we love you. We thank you for who you are. We ask you to speak to us tonight about who we are, our identity, our strengths, and how you've designed us. We want to be our very best, and we want to honor you with the gifts that you've given to us. And we're grateful, God, that you're a good father who never withholds anything good from us. You always said you would give us what is good. So tonight, God, we expect to see that. We expect the anointing in our strengths to rise in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. So tonight I'm going to introduce our team. I've not done this fully yet, but I want to go ahead and do that. So Miss Bria, if you would come up here very quickly, if y'all would welcome Miss Bria Hobgood. <laughs> Vanessa is currently online. She is not in the room right now, but if we could shout out Vanessa for being a uh, part of our team online with us. And uh, Manny, Manny's right back here on Pro Presenter. If we could just say hi to Manny. Manny, come on up, man. Come on up. We're not moving any, any slides right now. Uh, Robert is behind the camera. Uh, Mr. Robert Holdamp is right here. He's actually going to come out from behind the camera for us for just a moment. Uh, Paul Ray. Where is Paul Ray? Paul Ray, come up. Chris. Chris is right back here on the switcher. He's working for Zoom for us. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate everything that you do. David Terry is back there with him as well, as well as Ruby. Um, on our team as well is Dr. Dokes, who is out of town tonight, but his business partner and friend Brad is here. Mr. Bradley is here. Uh, he has been helping us and serving with the team as well. And uh, Mr. Bradley uh, played in the NBA, lived overseas and played in Spain. And so uh, he's been all over the world. And, and he and Dr. Dokes now partner in, in doing stuff all around Houston and, and really anywhere that they're asked to go to do leadership development. So they are professionals at this, and they are helping to coach us as we're getting the opportunity to serve you. And uh, uh, Craig, right back here on the soundboard. Craig, thank you so much for helping us make sure that everybody can hear us. And then, of course, my lovely wife, Tara. She's at home tonight on Zoom. And uh, and working with everybody online. So thank you everybody, I appreciate you being up here. Can we give one more hand to our team? They have been uh, serving nonstop since the beginning of January with us and I appreciate all of them being here every week and um, being the ones that set up, they run. Robert and Paul are part of our uh, video production team here at the church. They actually help do Monday night Bible study recordings and a bunch of other things, projects that go on here. And so this can go out all over the world simply because um, it's not about the talent of a few that everybody can see a lot of times on the microphone or the stage. It's about the sacrifice of the many. And at Lakewood, Pastor Joel's a big fan of that. It's not just the people that we can visibly see. As you know, uh, if you talk to any doctor or medical professional, the most vital organs are the ones you can't see. So if those go down, everything goes down. And so the most important people many times that we have in an organization, a team, a church, a, a, a you know, business are many times the people that nobody sees. And so I just want to give a shout out to anybody who has not been on stage or been on a mic or anything like that. You are exactly why we're here and you are servants and we appreciate you here at Lakewood. I've worked with many of them in kids life, done theater stuff with you guys and, and written scripts and, and been a part of a lot. So um, it's a joy to have all of you here as well. And we know that you serve. 
we know that you use your gift where you are in your world. And so that's why we're all here is to grow in what God has given to us to use to bless and help other human beings flourish. Uh, tonight, let's go briefly. I wanna talk about uh, Don Clifton. So when Dr. Clifton began the strengths test, it was a long journey. In 1949, um, he and his colleagues started the Nebraska Human Resources Research Foundation, which served as a community service to students and a laboratory for graduate students to practice strength-based psychology. It was during this time that Clifton, Dr. Don Clifton, developed hundreds of predictive instruments that could identify top, for, top performers for specific jobs. These scientifically validated instruments were designed to place the best talent in the right position. But there was something missing. Don Clifton's journey to create the Clifton Strength Finders culminated near the turn of the century in 2000. Clifton heeded the, the recommendations of Dr. Phil Stone. He's a, a Harvard psychology professor who suggested that the assessment should be broadened and designed for the coming digital age. So this test is specifically for our technological times. And it should be modified, and the scoring system should be a normative scoring system, which just simply means this. Many times we as humans, we look at the things that we're not good at. What Dr. Clifton wanted to do in the mid-1900s was he wanted to change that. He was a psychologist and he said, I want people to focus on what they're really good at, not what they don't do as well. Because most times in life, and let's be honest, most times in life we look down on the things that we're not instead of rejoicing in the things that we are or the gifts that we do have. And so what he did was he wanted to change this test to fit the coming te technological age and he wanted to do it in such a way that it really encompassed positive psychology for the human being to look at what do we do really well and let's focus on doing that the majority of the time. So there were a few questions online and a few people in the room that had questions last week about this particular strengths test, this 34 strengths profile. If you've had a chance to take the test, it has probably shown you your top five, by the way, um, if you haven't had a chance to take the test and you're looking for it, if you go online and you get the link and take the test by itself without the book, it's about 30, 35, maybe $40. If you buy the book and take the test in the back, it's $21. So I recommend, it's, it's almost half the price. So I recommend if you haven't taken it, buy the book and take the test from the book online. But what the test is supposed to do is supposed to show us. Now, uh, there were a few people that said, oh, well, hey, I don't really see my strengths on this list. And the list is specific to this test. So the list of strengths are words that Clifton and his scientist friends decided to come up with as the list of words that would describe certain categories of strengths. So if I think about it and I think of a word, like I believe my strength is fill in the blank, but you don't see that word on the list, it's probably because they're using a different word for that strength. So what we have to be careful of is to bring our own thoughts about what word we would use for our talent or strength and apply it to this test because this test has 34 specific words to describe those. And so when we take the test, um, I would encourage you, if you get the chance to do all 34, do that. But I would say your first five are really, really important. And we shared last week with Pastor Clayton and Ashley Hurst that for, for you or for anybody else to have the exact same five strengths in order is one out of 330 million. For somebody to have the top, your top seven all in perfect order is one out of, Eight billion, I believe, which is not going to happen. It's literally you're the only person with these talent and strength mixes in that order. So this is a very specific test that was designed for us to see what are we good at and how do we utilize these strengths, one, to honor God, and two, to be our very best in this world. And so Dr. Clifton came up with this many years ago, and his question was this, what would happen if we studied what was right with people instead of what was wrong with people? And so I, I pose that question to you. 
what would happen in our lives, in our leadership, in our family, our business? What would happen in our employership if we focused the vast majority of our time on what we do really well and then celebrate what everybody else does really well instead of many times? Because let's be honest, if I asked you, name me five things you don't like about yourself right now. Most human beings would go, I got the list, I know it. You know, I wake up in the morning and I go, oh, these three things are five things I don't necessarily like about me. One of the things, I would, when I was in youth ministry, my father taught me this, when I was in youth ministry, every so often I would have youth kids in junior high and high school, I would say, write me a list of 10 things you don't like about yourself right now. I mean, it took them five minutes, they'd write it down. And then I would say, write me a list of 10 things you do like about yourself right now. Some kids, it would take them an hour because we're conditioned, let's be honest, I wanna I want have, have a pastoral moment here if we can. We are taught in society to look down on what we don't do well instead of celebrate what we do well. And so this class is so vital for us and this church is so vital to bring hope to say, yes, all of us have areas where we're not as strong, but if we will focus on and really employ and utilize the areas where we are strongest, it will bring joy to our hearts, it will move the needle, it will fill our tank, and it will bless other people. And so my challenge to us, just like we talked about the first week, is instead of comparing ourselves with everybody else and what they do well, let's look at what we do well, let's see what God has put in our hand right now, and let's do our best with that, amen? and watch God take your leadership and your life to the next level because his desire is that you would utilize those strengths that he has given to you and to utilize them for the kingdom of God. And so Dr. Clifton wrote a book in, in 2003 um, called How Full Is Your Bucket? How Full Is Your Bucket? And this bestseller brought the power of Clifton's positive psychology to millions of people in thousands of workplaces and classrooms through the simple metaphor of a dipper and a bucket. In 2018, Gallup, the, the great uh, research company, introduced the Clifton Strengths 34 report. And it was uh, um, one of the preeminent leaders in the field of psychology was the American Psychology Association honored Dr. Don Clifton with a presidential commendation as the father of strengths-based psychology. So, and psychology is the, just the study of the, the mind, right? So we as humans are both physical and metaphysical. We are made up of things that, material things that you can see and things that you can't see, soul, the mind. And so he is considered the father of looking at what we do really well. And 30 million people, if you wanna go to the next slide for me, Manny, um, around the world, this is the concentration of how many and where people have taken these. It's hard to see the numbers at the top, I apologize. But the darker the green color, the more people have taken the strengths test in the world. And so you have um, different levels of, of groups in, in um, Brazil and South America, the United States, Alaska, Canada, um, China, India, and places, and it gets lighter green in other parts of the world. But this is the concentration of people. 30 million people have taken it um, since it started in the 90s, and he has distributed this test all over the world, and people continue to take the test. And that brings us to all of us. We are part of that 30 million now who have taken it. And my prayer is, is that people would continue to do it. Here's what I'll say that I said from the very first class. This test does not define fully who you are. Can we agree to that? Those of you watching online, this test does not define every bit of who you are, but it can put words to how God has de um, designed each of us individually to succeed in life and in his kingdom. So that is very important for us. Tonight, we're gonna do an activity, and I'm gonna ask Pastor Abner to come up here in just a moment. Um, but we're going to, uh, we're gonna do an activity, and Pastor Abner is gonna lead us in it. And um, we're gonna have a little bit of fun tonight. You're going to be picking um, a lineup of people for a company. Um, but what, what I wanna do very quickly is I just wanna ask you, is there anybody who took the test 
who hasn't shared your two, your top two strengths that wants to share with us tonight? Is there anybody who's willing to say, hey, I'd like to share my top two strengths um, that I learned, and I'd love to hear just a quick thought on it. Anybody want to share with us in the room? Anybody have the courage to jump in and do it? You want to share with us your top two? First one is strategic, and then the second one is achiever. Did it surprise you? Uh, did not. No, it didn't surprise you? Strategic and achiever. Okay, what's your number three? Um, relator. 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 Does anybody have relator in their strengths mix? Anybody have relator? Ruby back here, okay. Relator. All right, is it, is it top three for you? Gotcha. Okay. I'm communicator, relator, belief. Communicator, relator, belief. Anybody else have relator? Anybody have strategic? Anybody have strategic in yours? Okay. All right, and you said achiever as well? Anybody have achiever? Achiever, good. Good, good, good. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to jump right into it. And um, those of you who are online tonight, you're going to be with Tara, and you're going to do the same exact activity. But I'm going to introduce, if you all would give it up, please, for Pastor Abner Espana. He's going to help us with our activity tonight. All right. I'm very looking forward to this part because your table is your co-workers in the next 10 minutes. And um, you get to maybe have some disagreements and maybe to see where we put everybody. So this is what we're going to do. It says you and your colleagues have become business partners. Tell the person next to you, how you doing, business partner? All right. In a brand new company, you must select and hire employees for each of the 10 new jobs available. But in these first 10 minutes, we're only going to do five at the very beginning as you discuss and talk about what you are going to decide of those five. Now, you have the sheet in front of you. This is, this is a, a graphic uh, that we have. Um, this is how Clifton kind of helps on trying to identify everybody. And there's four categories. Executing, uh, this one, you can barely see what it says. Influencing. Influencing, okay. Relational building and strategic thinking. All right, so if you see on here, on green, green is your top 10. And you can see it, you can go by the first name. If we look at Tom, you have him spread out. All right, number one for Tom is responsibility. Number 10 is includer, and it's top 10. Now, the dark gray that you see on there is the, the, the last five. Basically, what you're saying that they're not really good at, but we all have different places and everybody is in, in a different um, category when you move on there. Now listen, my number one strength is futuristic. I'm always thinking, all right? Second is includer. Yes, I, I think I am very inclusive with everybody. So you can have you across the board. Now think about this way. If you're looking for a CEO, what do you think the CEO has to have at least one or two in what category? Huh? Green, okay, achiever. How about you guys, does anybody say maybe strategic thinking, maybe? Yes. <laughs> to go to the company to the next level, you know, there's futuristic ideation. There's a lot of different things, but that's why right now at this moment, take these 10 minutes, you can see on the graph and obviously the, the we have purple and they're, they're more around if it's like kind of yellowish is because they're kind of all over the board so take a look at that and these are the first five we're gonna we're gonna concentrate on first the first five uh man if you go to the next slide please is gonna be you're looking for an hr manager you're looking for informational information technology manager a marketing manager product manager, and a sales manager. These are the first five we're gonna concentrate. You can, you can write it on there, and then we're gonna discuss. I cannot wait to hear everybody's input. So remember, you got business partners on your table, your colleagues, so let's discuss, and we'll be back in 10 minutes.
That was, that was a good one, right? I know it was a little bit confusing. Anybody was a little bit confusing at the very beginning? Okay. All right. Let me go over real, real quick again. Sorry if I wasn't very into detail. Now, its top 10 strengths are in green. The darker green is top five. So if you see, if you see on the chart for Tom, on this screen, you can't really see it very well, but on here, it's dark green, one through five, and then it's light green from six to 10. But the gray that you see highlighted, dark gray, are the bottom five, okay? Now, if you see yellow, little yellow is because they're, they're kind of in, in the middle, all right? They're, they're, their strengths are everywhere. When you take the test, some of you guys are going to have one maybe in each of four category, categories, or you're going to have two in one, one, one and one on, on none, none of them when it comes to executing. Some of you guys will be like, I am not going to have none in executing. I'll tell you that right now, but that's okay. So when you're looking at who you want to put on these five people, we did the first one is HR, right? You looked at, let's see if Tom to Tara Tuesday, which would be the best fit according to their strengths. We're looking through the strengths and seeing what would be the best fit for Tom. Okay. I know we're going to give a little bit more time when we go to the next five, but let's start right now with HR. All right, that's the that's the very first one, HR manager. Anybody want to start from your from where well, you're at with your business partners? Maybe you want to talk to your business partners real quick and say, uh, "Yeah, want you want us to go first, or uh, who wants to go first to talk about?" All right, right over here. Who did you select for HR manager? Um, my uh, business partner and I picked Barack Smith. Barack S Smith. Barack, Barack. Oh, Barack Smith. Okay. Yeah. For our Ooh. business manager. I mean, HR. For HR. Why? Um, would you like to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> because of the strengths of strategic and achiever, we felt like um, Barack would get things done. Um, also, he has, has good uh, people skills with communication and wooing. Okay. <laughs> Raise your hand if you also had Barack Smith there. All right. And then my next question was, did anybody disagree? <laughs> huh? Anybody else having somebody else different? Let me go right there. Yeah. All right. For HR, we chose uh, Steve Sampson. <laughs> Steve and Sampson. Because okay. he is so strategic, and he is very positive, and he is a very good arranger. All right. He's a good relator. So if he's dealing with employees and he's doing training, he's got to be good with people. And um, that's who we picked. That's great. Anybody else choose Steve, Steven Sampson for that? All right, one, two, three, all right, four, all right. Now, online, we also had we also had people online that they had discussion with Ruby. What did people online say for HR manager? So online, they also chose Steven Sampson. All right. All right, thank you for everybody online participating. Thank you so much. I know Tara did an amazing job explaining everything to you there. All right, so. The next, the next one was, let's see if I have it, there it is, information technology manager. All right, who would want to start, ask your business partners, hey, you want us to go next? Huh? Who, wants to, who wants to say next? Who did you choose for information technology manager? Right here, perfect. Uh, we chose Sally Sample. Uh, because she ranked high in ideation and futuristic, as well as being strategic, we would have wished you had a higher analytical score, but she did not. Okay. So you said Sally Sampson. Sample. Anybody else choose Sally? No? All right. Anybody choose somebody different? Huh? Let's go. Let's go right here. Let's go right here. Tom Sample. Huh? Tom Sample. Tom Thompson. Okay, why? 
Tom Thompson. Tom Sample. Oh, Tom Sample. Okay. Tom Sample. Oh, very top. Okay. He's, uh, strong in ideation, but he's very strong in executing. He's got four out of five of his top strings are in executing, but he also has uh, significance, includer, analytical input, learner, input and learner very related. Got to okay. have a big body of knowledge in ideation, which is dealing with ideas. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Online. What do we get for online for information technology manager, Ruby? Let me see. They chose Sally Sample. Oh, okay. All right. Look, we have a lot of different opinions and a lot of different, and it's amazing to see the profile. Everybody has the same answer. Well, it's because they have included, they were good at this, or they were good at that, but that's good. All right, number three, let's move on. Marketing manager, marketing manager. Any new table that would love to share? Right here, we got over here, Paul. Right here, marketing manager. Who did you guys choose? That table up there. We chose Sally Sample. For oh, okay. Futuristic, All right. And Sample. Okay. I'm guessing how many tables had Sally for marketing manager? All right. All right. That's good. A lot of, a lot of same thinking on that. What is it that stood out to you? If, if a lot of you chose her, what stood out to you that made her be like, hey, this has to be the marketing manager? Ideation. Great. Okay. Futuristic. Okay. Great. Online. Online, Ruby, what did, what did everybody say? Please tell me they picked the same person. No. Oh, okay. They picked Tom Thompson. Oh, okay. Raise your hand if you picked Tom Thompson. All right. One, two, three. Okay. Hey, it's good. Agree to disagree. That was a good one, okay? Let's move on to the fourth one. Pro product manager. Product manager. Any a new table that hasn't spoke that would love to speak? What did you choose for product Manager. I think manager. All right, let's go back. Let's go back over there. Product manager. Uh, we picked uh, Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Yes. <laughs> Raise your hand if you also picked Peter Piper. No. no. Okay. What? what? <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else pick someone? What did you guys pick for Ronnie Matt? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, we picked Jean Smith. Uh, oh, okay. For product manager. She's an achiever, responsibility, deliberative, um, and she's a relator. Okay. And finally, she's strategic. So that's why we picked Jean Smith. Jean Smith. Anybody else pick Jean Smith? No? Oh, who did you pick? Tara Tuesday. Oh, all right. Anybody else Tara Tuesday? All right, we're going, we're going different on this one. A lot of people disagreed and maybe they chose different. What does online say? Who did they choose? So they had a tie. It was between Gene Smith and Peter Piper. Oh, all right. Okay. All right, online. This, that's, I see you. You already got to break the tie next time, okay? You guys do rock, paper, scissors, or some, something online. All right, last one, sales manager. Sales manager, let's go right here. Well, one of the biggest qualities that we find on here is that he's futuristic. A sales manager that doesn't create new things is, is not a good option. He's a um, uh, maximizer, he's self-insurance, he has to be confident, of course he has it, his command and his communication. If you don't know how to communicate, you're out of the business. What is the name? Uh, Tom Thompson. All right, Tom Thompson. Anybody else choose Tom Thompson? All right, one, two others. Anybody that disagreed, they chose somebody else. Huh? They want to explain why. Oh, right over there. Right over there. Oh, right there too, okay. We picked Gene Smith. Okay. 
Gene Smith. Anybody else Gene Smith? You guys Gene Smith as well? All right. Online. They picked Tara Tuesday. Tara Tuesday. Tara Tuesday. Anybody else pick Tara Tuesday? Oh, one, two. Okay. All right. So we're going to move to the next, the next five. The next five are administrative assistant, bookkeeper, software engineer, sales representative, business analyst. Okay? But now you have all 10. So now you can move around if you need to. And maybe it's going to be a little bit harder, but you can say, hey, uh, Tom, t you can say, Tara Tuesday, yeah, we're definitely going to move her and put her again on this one. She'll be better here. So look overall everything. And remember, you're looking for the top strengths that are in green, the top 10, and the bottom five are the gray. All right? So talk it over with business partners. Say, hey, business partner, hey, round two. Let's get this. Let's get this going let's get this better let's communicate better let's see how we can all combine and see how we can all be the same all right online you're back with tara so we'll be back in 10 minutes i know time flies when you're with business partners and going through the list i know online has done an amazing job thank you for sharing thank you for being your input so raise your hand on your on your on your table, if you change even the people from the first job descriptions and you just change people around, raise your hand. There we go. One, two, three, four, maybe people online too, maybe. Change people around or the last five, you put it for the next five. Okay, great. All right, listen, every, every table is different. Let's start with administrative assistant. Who did you choose for administrative assistant? First table, let's start right here with administrative assistant. Right here, who did you guys choose? Uh, we're on a budget, so we didn't hire. <laughs> so we didn't hire project manager or sales manager, but for administrative assistant, we hire um, Kathy. Hire Tom Sample. Tom Sample, all right. For administrative assistant. Anybody else but Tom? Tom's, okay, there we go. We switched him. All right, over there as well. What did online say? What did online say for administrative assistant? They chose Sally Sample. Sally, okay. Anybody else put Sally? All right, we got one table that agreed. Okay. Bookkeeper. Bookkeeper. Was this an easy one or was this a, a little tough one, huh? <laughs> All right. Who did you guys have? Gene Smith. Gene Smith. All right. Anybody else had Gene Smith? Okay, Gene Smith. Anybody have a different different name? Let's go. Let's go with let's go to that table right there. This table right here we haven't really heard from. Yes. Bookkeeper. We had uh Tom Sample. Okay. And because uh, he's an achiever, a ranger, he's responsible. Um, he's got ideation and restorative. Okay, Tom Sample. Interesting choice. Is that what you guys have too, Tom Sample? All right, all right. Software engineer. Software engineer, oh, sorry, sorry. Online, who did you guys have for bookkeeper? We had two people. They were tied. A tie again? Yes. Um, Les and Jean. All right. Jean and who? Les. Les. All right. Anybody have Les as bookkeeper? Okay. That's all right. All right. Thank you, online. Number three. It is software engineer, right? Is that what? It? Yeah, software engineer. Software engineer. Tom Thompson. Okay. Anybody else have Tom Thompson? Software engineer. No? All right. Why did you guys choose Tom Thompson for that position? It's okay. It's okay because remember, your table is your own business. 
You get to make the right decision, qualified decision, but if he's the one, he's the one for you. All right? Anybody disagree to have somebody else for software engineer? Huh? Peter Piper. Anybody have Peter Piper? Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. All right. What did online have? This one's another tie. What? I know. Um, Peter Piper and Sally Sample. All right. Okay. That Peter Piper is very uh, smart and famous <laughs> with a lot of businesses. A lot of people want them. So, all right. Who's going to give them more salary? All right. Never mind. Uh, sales representative. Sales representative. Over here. What do you got? His hand is raised right there. Yeah, in a red shirt. Uh, we have we have the rag uh, Smith uh, because he's a uh, he's good in communication. Uh, Woo, he's an achiever uh, and he's futuristic and strategic. Barack Smith, right? Yeah. Yes. Anybody else have Barack Smith there? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Online. They chose Tom Thompson. Tom Thompson. Anybody else had Tom Thompson? Agrees with online. Okay, we have one table, two tables. Okay. What's, what's very interesting is obviously we're here in the room and we're doing this together, and it's awesome that are online, they're doing it together too. But we have people from all over the world, different outlooks, different perspectives, and uh, they're actually kind of agreeing with some of you. So, you know, thank you for always tuning in and putting, and putting your time. Last one is business analysts business analysts who did you who did you guys have less lessman oh less lessman less okay anybody else have less all right three tables three tables online please don't tell me you have a tie no <laughs> okay <laughs> they picked tom sample oh tom sample anybody else have tom sample no I heard Sally. Okay. We picked his wife. <laughs> That's a good yeah. Maybe she's smarter. Yeah. Business analyst. All right. All right. Tell the person next to your business partner next to you today. Hey, good job. Good job. We picked the best team. Tell them we picked the best team <laughs> for us as we continue. <laughs> you guys enjoyed this activity? All right. Give it up for Pastor. Jeremy. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Pastor Abner. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish and close for tonight, but I would, I would like to challenge you. If you'd like to take this home, look over it over the next week. Next week is going to be the final week. We're going like to be right here know. with Dr. Destry Dokes is going to close us out with this Living Your Strengths Class 103. So if you want to come back next week, please be here. Those of you watching online, please come back. Um, if you want to go ahead and do this as homework, you can read chapter six. It's very short in the book. Read chapter six and understanding it's a calling. Your strengths are a calling from God. So we're going to talk about that next week and we're going to close out with that. But I would, I would highly encourage you. Some of you, I know we talked to at least one table. Some of you looked at it and went, <clears throat> I don't think I would hire some of these people. <laughs> Yeah, so here's, here's the thing. Leadership is about making important decisions. One of, the, one of the most important things we do as leaders is make decisions for ourselves, the team, the group, the organization, the company, the church, whatever it may be. You're making decisions. So if you find yourself going, mm, I don't know that anybody on this team fits this job description, then maybe you think I need to open up the interview process and find the right person. You keep going until you find the person that, that fits. Now, here's the thing. It's not only the skill fit, it's the culture fit as well. Okay? So we're talking hard skills, soft skills. And really right now in the marketplace, if you look the last 10, 12 years, it's flipping. It's changing. It used to be, get, you know, hire somebody for their hard skills. They're really good technically at what they do and then hope they fit the culture. That's starting to change a lot. Companies are hiring for culture first, and then they're teaching people how to and developing them in their skills and their abilities. So this does not measure culture fit, okay? Like, for instance, you in the medical field, you would know. I was talking to Dr. Paul. I love this analogy. Um, you know, if somebody has a heart transplant, you're not necessarily looking for the, uh, a heart that technically functions. Any heart that's alive could function. 
you're looking for the right tissue match. That's culture. So not just the skill, but the culture. So I would encourage you, take this home, look over it. If you get a chance this week, if you have an extra 15 minutes, um, look over it again and say, hey, who, who would I get? And if I don't find somebody, who would I go look for in order to find that right fit and culture fit? Because that's gonna be important, not only for you as a, as a leader, but for the team in itself to find the right people in the right spots on the team to help everybody flourish and all the water in the harbor rises and brings all the boats up, right? That's what we do. All right, next week, uh, we're gonna finish class 103. It's already week four next week. Golly, this one feels like it's flown by. Uh, Dr. Destry Dokes is gonna be here. Don't miss it. Reach out to anybody, leadership to 77377. Um, tell them to, to sign up. We will send people the link for next week. And then class 104 starts June 1st. June 1st, we're already there. June 1st starts class 104 for communication. We're gonna do a couple of weeks on communication. We're gonna talk about everyday communication. We're gonna talk about public speaking communication. We're gonna talk about learning how to not only, here's what's important, not only learning how to communicate information in public speaking and communication, interpersonal communication, but also how to have a connection map I want to teach one week about how to have a, a connection map, a heart-to-heart -heart connection map with a group of people. So it's not just communicating information, but how do you take people on a journey when you're sitting and talking with them? So you make a connection that way. So we're going to talk about how to have two different types of maps in your communication, information communication and also relational ability with the person's heart. We're going to talk about that. So anyways, um, we're so excited to, to uh, finish next week, and um, I'm going to get on with this. So I'm going to pray and end so we can all go. Thank you for watching from wherever you are in the world. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have gifted us, given us talents. God, our gift back to you is that we would use them for your glory. Thank you that our story is for your glory. We ask you to help us to lead well this week. Help us to listen. Help us to see the strengths and the abilities and, and the talents in other people to celebrate those and help them find where they can make their mark best. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Next week, chapter six, and we'll be here with Dr. Destry Dokes. We'll see you then.